What have you done? Batman v Superman totally sucks, right? I mean, how could DC ruin such a beloved brand with two of the most recognizable characters in the past hundred years? This has to be the downfall of DC's film universe, obviously. I mean, I guess there's only room for Marvel because they have never made a bad movie before, right? Right? It certainly is no secret that superhero films have had quite the iffy track record. Everyone in the game has managed to fail. DC has failed. Fox has failed. Sony has failed. And of course Marvel has failed. But what makes a comic adaptation really a failure? Let's start off with the money. The most recent Spider-Man film was considered a total failure because it only made $700 million worldwide. But money cannot truly be the case because one of the best comic to film adaptations ever, this certain Versus movie, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, was a total box office failure. So then it must be the critics that decide what movie is a failure. Because Batman vs Superman is a worse movie than X-Men Origins, Wolverine, and Spider-Man 3. Oh no. The thing that the average person forgets when they read a review is that every review completely hinges on the author themselves, which is really a single person's opinion. It's hard to completely believe a critic as it is a very subjective opinion that can be swayed by personal feelings and outside factors. And this is coming from a guy that used to regularly review movies. What I'm trying to get at is, you really shouldn't base your opinion off of someone else's. I know the bandwagon seems like a comfortable place to sit in, but that's an ignorant place to be. If a film like Batman vs Superman comes out and you know the characters interest you, give it a chance instead of blindly hating it and then shoving that opinion down everyone's throat. If blind hate is being thrown around everywhere, of course there's going to be a negative connotation with the film. But there are some times when a movie comes out and completely dashes all your hopes you had for the film. Now, I'm going to be using Batman v Superman as it's the current hot topic. I have watched all 10 seasons of Smallville, have read every major Batman arc, and have several shrines to superheroes in my bedroom alone. So, I think it's pretty safe to say I was expecting at least something half decent from Batman vs Superman. Truth be told, it definitely is not a horrible movie, but it's also not great, and that would be totally okay if it was the next Vince Vaughn movie, but it's two of the world's greatest. <laughs> get, get the pun? The two, great, no, okay. So, for me the problem does not come with Zack Snyder's style. Batman breaking his code. Fetus Doomsday. Or even Eisenberg's spoiled rich kid Luther. For me, the disappointing part is nothing really happens in a movie filled with so many side plots. There's Lois Lane with a bullet. Superman finding Batman. Alex's hatred for the gods. Bruce's hatred for alien scum. Diane's photo. And the shoehorn Justice League. Remember the last movie with so many side plots? Yeah, they don't work. For me, I think a superhero movie, or any movie for that matter, truly becomes a disappointment when it doesn't achieve what it sets out to be. To really understand this point, it's important to look at the flip side of the coin for this argument. Nolan's Batman was supposed to be a real gritty look into Gotham, which succeeded tremendously. Deadpool was supposed to be a low budget laugh fest, which really put the limelight on a fan favorite. Spider-Man 2 was supposed to successfully interpretate the Spider-Man No More arc, which it did perfectly. So what was Batman v Superman trying to be? Well, I'm actually asking you the audience because I really can't tell as there was no real overarching plot. Notice how I named several side stories without a clear main plot point? Well, usually a screenplay branches off of a single idea, but this film certainly did not. It was a studio's botched attempt at turning Man of Steel 2 into the success of five films that led into Marvel's Avengers. I like to call this the studio effect. It's when a studio vomits several ideas out into a single movie to create an entire universe in the course of two hours. Batman v Superman forgot that it was supposed to be all about the two most badass superheroes of all time sparring in an all out fight. That's what disappointed me, which really does suck because the movie did succeed with several things like the actual character of Batman, the 8 minute fight scene between Batman and Superman, 
and the performances by everyone. So, Identity Crisis. I guess that's what makes a comic book film disappointing. It happened in The Newest Fantastic Four, Amazing Spider-Man 2, and now Batman v Superman. Was it supposed to be The Dark Knight Returns? No matter how much source material a film may borrow from, it's super important to at least have a real baseline because as Max Landis said in regards to Batman v Superman, This is not a Superman movie or, or a Batman movie or a Wonder Woman movie or a DC Comics movie. And it's not pretending to be one. It lets you know right out the bat that this is its own, this is a different thing. It, it's not interested in being true to these characters as we've understood them. 